responded to with, with the recommendations that you see in the first column here under, under the year 2012. A book collection of 125,000 volumes, non-print 15,000 volumes, 75 public PCs, 166 reader seats, and so on. Um, you know, some of, and then you see the, the recommendation from 2005. You see the inventory that the library has today. Um, you know, some of the forecasts that we were making in this most recent iteration, I think, are more um, are more cautious than the, which is to say, you know, subdued, lower than the recommendations we made in 2005. One of those is the recommendation for the number of volumes held. Now, even though it's the you know, the number is basically the same, I think if we were following. If we were applying the same considerations today that we applied in 2005, we would have placed that service goal more in the neighborhood of 150 to 160. Constituted the spaces at the desk and in the back room where the library has a place to do some you know, operationally related activity. Yeah, and I just. I, I know that the library is, you know, the staff is from time to time taking work out and you know, working on the tables out in the in the main reading area, and so I mean the staff is is adapting and kind of co-opting additional staff workstations that are really public areas, and you know, I mean, that, that's happening all the time, which and it's a very common occurrence in a library that's uh, in the in the spot that, that the Belleville Library is, is at. There's another issue that, that we need to, to think of, and that has to do with this branch that the library has committed to. We're talking about you know, system-wide goals, but we also need to deploy the system-wide goals between the main library and the branch. Based on the experience that, that I've had uh, observing the way libraries operate over the last, uh, well, you know, if you go back to the very beginning of my career, I, I realized earlier this year that at the beginning of this month, I got to celebrate the 40th anniversary of my first library hire. I was a paid shelver at my hometown library back in Rockford, Illinois. And uh, I've been working in and with libraries uh, ever since, so, you know, 40 years. Um, it's the dairy products. <laughs> <laughs> You know, based on the observations that I've, that I've made, uh, this is a fair starting point for the distribution between a main library and a branch, about 10% of the, the, the overall resource going to a branch, uh, the remainder being housed and made available through the main library. You know, I want to emphasize that there is nothing you know, rigid or magical about this particular distribution you know, as, as the library staff and the board continue to ponder you know, some of these issues, you know, they may decide to shift the balance one way or another. I mean, it could be that, that uh, there's an opportunity emerge for a branch location that you know, can support a building of X square feet. And maybe that building you know, can't support a full 12,500 volume collection. And so you may, you, know, you may need to make an adjustment. Planning is a series of approximations. To a moving target, but for discussion purposes, I think this is a fair a fair distribution. So, how do those service goals translate into a space need? Well, you know, I, I gave you one example earlier on. <coughs> Each reader seat needs about 30 square feet per. So, if we look at the line right here around the middle of the the, the slide, reader seating space. So, well, you know, our planning model is suggesting you know, 142 reader seats. Uh, and you know, the space that the reader seats will need really, really is, is reflected by this range from 4,900 square feet to about 4,200 square feet. There are, I don't know, it's <coughs> hmm, changing gears. We're going to talk about collections instead, just because I think it's a little, I think it's a little clearer and easier. To, to, to draw the distinctions. You know, we're looking at a book collection at the main library of 112,500 square feet. That collection can be housed in a variety of, of shelving environments. And the, the particulars 
that accrue to, to those various shelving environments will affect how many volumes you get per square foot, how many square feet you need to house the proposed collection. At one end of the spectrum, you might specify a, a shelving environment that uses the bare minimum three-foot aisle that's allowed under the Americans with Disabilities Act. You might specify a shelving environment that uses full height, 84 or 90 inch tall shelving, that's the kind of shelving you have in your, in your present library. You may specify shelving that has exceedingly long runs without a cross aisle to provide convenient access to maneuver through the collection. Exceedingly long runs like you do in the library you have right now. Uh, you know, and all of those things will conspire to create you know, a high level of volumes per square foot and a low space need requirement for an 112,000 volume collection. On the other end of the spectrum, you might specify a, a shelving environment that is you know, maybe with a 48 inch aisle so that, heaven forbid, two people can pass in the aisle without having to, you know, kind of skinny up and, you know, suck in your gut. Uh, you might, that, that optimum environment might include, you know, not 84 or 90 inch tall shelving, but 72 inch tall shelving. You know, it's been interesting in the last two or three years. Prior to two or three years ago, the de facto starting point for just about every public library that I work with in, in facilities planning was to assume we're going to have 84 or 90 inch tall shelving. Librarians have known for generations that people don't use the top shelf. They don't like to reach up to the top shelf. And yet, because we felt compelled to get the most volumes per square foot that we can manage, we've, used, we've specified 84 90 inch tall shelf. About two, three years ago, it was like a switch was flipped in our collective librarian's brain. And every library that I've worked with over the last couple of years has instead started from the standpoint of 72 inch tall shelf. Now, as, as, as some of those libraries have proceeded deeper into their planning process, they haven't necessarily been able to maintain that. You know, there may be as a budget issue or a political issue that's obligated them to create more density in the collection, and they've had to give that up, and they've gone to 84 or 90. But that's kind of the new, that's the new starting point for most of, for most of the libraries. So you can, if, if you were to apply an optimum space need at every choice along the way, we would produce an estimated space need based on this particular set of resource and service inventory, optimum space need of a little bit more than 57,000 square feet. Moderate produces a different uh, element or a different result. The low minimum kind of application, if you were to do, make that choice at every single juncture, you would need 44,100 and some square feet. The far right column is what I would recommend you use as a talking point. It's kind of where, within that range from low to high, I think you're most likely to, to wind up. You know, and you'll see that, you'll see that, for instance, here with the, in the recommendation, you know, I'm encouraging you to think in terms of an optimum shelving environment for the collection, one that is user-centric, not collection-centric, one that emphasizes our patrons' ability to use the collection easily, over you know, our ability to put more stuff in a given amount of floor space. You know, early in my career, I was working with a library in Marengo, Illinois, which is a, like 30 miles north and west, or east and north of Rockford. Um, you know, and one of the very broad rules of thumb that, that you often use in planning library space is that, you know, ballpark average, you get about 10 volumes per square foot. And I was meeting with the board, and I you know, kept saying, well, you get 10 volumes per square foot. And about the third or fourth time I said 10 volumes per square foot, the board president finally had had enough. And he threw his pencil on the floor and he said, damn it, Anders, I was in this library over the weekend. I measured it. We get 22 volumes per square foot. <laughs> yeah, and I looked at it and I said, you know, Bob, that really that doesn't surprise me. Because, you know, they had 90-inch tall shelving and they had books stacked on top of the 90-inch tall <laughs> shelving. The shelves were full, to, each shelf was full to the three-foot length. Between the top of the book and the shelf above, they had books jimmied in there. They had books on the windowsill. They had books piled up on the floor. I said, it doesn't surprise me one bit that you get 22 volumes per square foot. But, Bob, the point is you're not supposed to. 22 volumes per square foot is, I mean, that makes it more difficult 
for people to find stuff because it's too crowded. So we have all these variations. Yeah, my talking point for you would be 48,100 square feet, give or take, for, for the main for the main lot. For the branch, uh, yeah. same process, yeah. very different results because we have a different a different set of inputs. And we have smaller collections, a different kind of meeting room configuration, and for a branch yeah. <clears throat> to house this set of resources. We're recommending a building of about 6,600 square feet. This just gives you a little summary of how those, those spaces are distributed uh, in, the two, uh, in the two facilities. Uh, collections, books, non-print, magazines, public computers. The red line on this chart are the, is, the, is the branch. The main library is represented in blue. And there's some, uh, some uh, similarity. Uh, there's a higher proportion of space uh, devoted at the main library to collections, higher proportion of space at the branch devoted to, to uh, reader seating. Overall, there's a higher proportion of space devoted at the main library for conference rooms and, and meeting spaces and so on. Just gives you a sense of, of how these spaces Will be uh, will be distributed. One thing that is that I think is is often surprising to uh, folks in an audience like this is the amount of space that we need for non-assignable purposes. You know, that becomes overall within the building that typically becomes one of the largest segments of space uh, that we need to uh, provide. It's some of the back of house kind of engineering space that happens. That pretty much winds up the, the program. I have one more slide that I'm going to show to you as we're leaving, as we're leaving the house. Uh, but in the meantime, we, just, we have some, uh, some pictures of, of recent libraries. This picture happens to be a, a device that's uh, coming onto market from a German company. It's called Lib Dispenser. Basically, it's a red box for libraries. Uh, it's, a, it's a device that will house a small collection, uh, depending on how big it is, 1,500 to maybe 3,000 volumes. You can access it by a screen on the, on the front, just as you do a red box. Uh, and um, uh, you can you make your selection accordingly. Uh, the, I know the, the Alameda County, California Library has installed one of Lib Dispenser's boxes uh, at, a, at a public transit station in an outdoor environment, so it's available 24-7. Uh, there's a new branch in Elgin, Illinois, that has uh, installed one of their competitor's devices. It's on the exterior wall of the building, so again, people can get to it 24-7, whether the library is open or not. It's, an, it's a mechanism for uh, extending, uh, extending services. Uh, some of the devices, the lib dispenser device in particular, uh, can be configured in a way that it can be used to deliver items that you might put on reserve. If you might, you can put a reserve out, and when the item comes in, you, if, if, you, if the library has the, the device, you know, the patron can ask that it be delivered via the, the lib dispenser. And again, if the, if the dispenser is outdoors, you have access to it you know, around an exterior wall, you really can come and get the material at your at your leisure, but you would you know, enter in your code and the, the library, the, the machine would deliver the, uh, the item to the delivery slot and you know, off you go. I just, this, this thing, I, I, gotta, I, I gotta mention this thing just because it's so funky. This is a proposal, this was actually, actually, no, this was the winning entry in a design competition a few years ago for, I think it was, I think it was a national, new national library in Bulgaria hmm. or something. You know, the, the thing, uh, the project imploded of its own political weight at some point, so that it never got built, but it's funny looking, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, like I said, yeah. we're done, I mean, at least my presentation is done. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions that you